Let's take an in-depth look at VSL's new Synchrome Brass. I already did a video for them on their channel if you want to check that one out, but I figured I'll do another one just for my channel. So the Synchron Brass was recorded at the Synchron stage in Vienna. It's a state-of-the-art stage where a lot of film scores are recorded these days. It comes with eight solo instruments and nine ensembles. There's two versions of this library, the standard version and the full version. The standard version comes with close, mid and decatree mics and it's 75 gigabytes large and then the uh, full library comes with more mic positions. Some of them are specifically for instruments. Um, it also comes with surrounds and outriggers and just a bunch of additional mic positions. And that version of the library is roughly 136 gigabytes large. So definitely don't expect to use this product instantly because it's gonna take a while to download. Every product that I try to download from them is it's just massive. It takes forever. So always plan that in. You're gonna need a lot of hard drive space and ideally SSDs to run these libraries. Like these people are not holding back. Usually other developers are like, well, how big can we make the product and how demanding can we make the product for you know, people's computer systems? because they want to appeal to a wide customer base and not everybody has the pro machines, of course. But the people at VSL, they're just really going for it <laughs> and just record everything and just, you know, have massive libraries, but they're also very demanding on the system. So if you're a beginner, this might not be for you. Like I even needed to put more RAM and hard drive space into my VE Pro machine just to run these libraries because, uh, you know, they're just so massive. And these libraries are also on the more expensive end of the spectrum. Um, they're definitely some of the most expensive libraries out there on the market. And rightfully so, because you get a lot of content and it's all very, you know, meticulously sampled. Um, but yeah, just be aware of that. Again, if you're a beginner and you only have a laptop or something, or you're a hobbyist and you have an old weak machine, um, you might have trouble with this one. As all VSL libraries, it loads into their free Synchron player, so no additional software is needed to play this, other than a DAW, of course. I've already done a video on the Synchron player and also Vienna Ensemble Pro, so you can check that out if you want to know more about this. And as usual, they created presets for each instrument and instrument group. Um, they created EQ presets for users to try out. They created mic mix presets. They created reverb presets. And they're different for each instrument or each, each patch. So they really went in and tried to get the best result or different kinds of results. And then you can pick from a drop down menu what you want, which is really nice of them to do. And it's really. Um, a good way to quickly test out what mix you're looking for and what the library can do with the different mic positions. And if you are a beginner and you're using this, it's also nice to look at the EQs and kind of see what they did. So um, I like that they keep doing that. One of the most outstanding things in this library is the timbre adjust feature. I don't think any other library has that, at least none that I have. It's basically an extra CC control that functions like a filter um, and the way it works is say especially in brass when they play at a low velocity it's a very mellow warm sound but then when they play very loudly usually it's a very bright and brassy sound but real players can actually control the brightness of the instrument a little bit better than samples can usually samples only have 
like pre-recorded velocity layers and they're either very bright or very mellow. And in a lot of libraries, it also switches very quickly from bright, uh, from mellow to bright. But so what timbre adjust does is if it gets too bright for your taste, you can kind of roll down the timbre adjust and it'll apply a filter to mellow up the sound again. Kind of like a real player would control it if you were to tell them in a session, hey, can I have it loud but a bit less bright? Then they would know what to do. Um, and so this extra CC control kind of allows you to mimic the player doing that. There's regular and fast legato and also an auto speed function, which works actually really well. So um, all the legatos I think work very, very well in this library. There are pre-recorded crescendos, which is usually an issue because if you're writing a piece and you know something is recorded for like three seconds, that might not go exactly with the tempo of your piece but they have the time stretch feature that actually allows you to make the crescendos as long as you need them to be. And it comes with a lot of articulations. It comes with pre-recorded repetitions, double tong, triple tong, obviously all kinds of regular sustains, uh, all kinds of short articulations. It has different pre-recorded uh, upbeats. So it comes with a lot of stuff and more. I don't think there are mutes in here. I would think there's going to be like probably a pro version or something of this library that's going to come out sometime in the future that is going to have muted articulations and stuff in it. One of the downsides for me is that it's inconsistent between patches and you know from my other videos that I kind of hate that. It's a pet peeve of mine. Um, when you know one patch has five articulations but then another patch of the same instrument has you know only three of those articulations because you know, it, it can make it difficult to compose with it, especially going from one section to the other. Or if you want to copy paste something, it just doesn't work anymore. I did find this library very easy to program. There are no common issues in this, uh, no bumps in the legatos, and it's properly timed. I think they even made expression maps. The volume and velocity transitions are very smooth and there's no phasing or anything going on as, as far as I can hear. I did find a little issue um, with where in the shorts a wrong round robin was triggered from a different articulation. It's not a big deal and I'm sure they're gonna fix that but um, that's kind of the danger with developers having their own players where you can't go into the back end because if this were a contact patch, I could easily go into the back end and just fix that in one second. Whereas now I have to wait for the developer to fix it. The strength of this library is definitely the trumpets, but specifically the first trumpet. I don't think I've heard a trumpet that well sampled. It's, it sounds really, really great. And also the low brass, specifically the trombones. They're usually the weak point in a lot of libraries and these trombones sound really gorgeous, I think. <laughs>
strangely enough, the horns needed the most work, which is usually the instrument group um, that is, you know, the most flawless in the other libraries, but okay. The overall sound is very classical, very Viennese, if you want. Um, it's not epic Hollywood, I would say. I, th I think like if you were to program John Williams or Jerry Goldsmith or something like that, and you do a more classical approach to scoring, this is great. If you want like, you know, the epic Inception brass or something, uh, I'm not sure this is the library to go with. Like all of their libraries, they use a lot of key switches which I still think is a pain. Um, but they also, I think they give you expression maps for Cubase, so that's great. <laughs> I, I would encourage using those. Or what I tend to do is just split out the articulations the way I want them. The library is actually programmed well enough where you, I think, where you can use a lot of expression maps. With other developers, sometimes I feel like the patches are just so all over the place with timing and volumes that it doesn't really work. But with this one, I think it could work. I just still prefer splitting out articulations. I think that's that's my way of doing it, but it's not for everyone. So this is definitely one of the largest and most versatile brass libraries out on the market currently. But again, I would not say this is a beginner library. It's easy to use, but it's so demanding and expensive that I would say if this is your first brass library, you know, you might be struggling a bit if you're a student. But I really do think VSL, they, they really make pro products. They don't necessarily make beginner products or, you know, semi-professional products or hobbyist products, um, which the price tag and the tech specs really already suggest. I think this might also be really good for concert composers um, who are looking for all kinds of articulations that maybe film composers aren't always looking for. And especially since it's also such a natural, um, elegant classical sound that this library has. And so if you're looking to put more nuance into your mock-ups, especially for concert composers, I think um, this would be a really great library. And also for film composers that don't get to record their um, music live all the time, I think this is probably with brass. I don't know if it's the closest you can get, but it's pretty damn close, for sure. I hope this was helpful. Um, I'll be reviewing a lot more VSL products in the future, um, so stay tuned.